So if you guys remember, I recently did a video on my Lincoln Town Car, how to change the oil on that. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is my girlfriend's 2019 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. And we're going to be doing an oil change on this car. It's currently at about 75,000 miles. She drives quite a bit for work. Like I already mentioned, this is the hybrid. And this is how you know it's her car. <laughs> because as you can see, we got some good old curb rash on there, right? But anyways, I'm going to go over what you guys are going to need first. And then we'll kind of jump right into this. So first things first, anytime you're doing an oil change on a car, you kind of want to make sure it's warmed up. Not hot, but you just kind of got done driving it. You let it cool down a little bit. That'll help the oil flow out easier. As you can see, I got it up on these things called Rhino Ramps. You could find those at your local Walmart usually or Amazon. That's just to kind of help bring the car up a little bit so you got more clearance and more room to work. Uh, me personally, I enjoy my beer and tacos. So for me to kind of thin myself out and get underneath this car it's a little bit of a hassle but these ramps do help me personally you may not need to use them but i recommend them if you're having trouble getting underneath the car so once you got the car warmed up you know you drove it you pulled into the garage you threw it up on your ramps if you need to you're gonna go ahead and pop open this hood a little stick comes down right from there to go ahead a hood prop and it goes into a hole right there in the frame where you can go ahead and prop that up and you're also going to start by turning off this oil cap because that'll also help the oil flow better once you pull that oil drain plug. But kind of leave it on top there so no debris gets in there. As you can see, this engine's pretty dirty. We don't want anything falling into that engine that's not supposed to be going in there. So speaking of dirty, yeah, we really need to get this thing cleaned up a full detail. But as you can see here, engine oil, it recommends 0W16 and it's about four and a half quarts it takes this particular car. So today I'm gonna to be using this Valvoline Full Synthetic 0W16. Uh, this oil, the weight of it, the 0W16 is kind of hard to find. It's a little bit more rare. I actually purchased this on Amazon because that's where I was able to find it. So keep that in mind. You might not be able to walk into your local store and, and find this 0W16. So you may need to purchase on Amazon. This oil filter I picked up at my local Toyota dealership. I just went to their parts counter, told them my vehicle. This is what they gave me. Part number 90915-YZZN1. And they even threw in a little, um, for my oil drain plug, the little gasket there they threw in for free. So that's what you're going to need. I just got that five quart jug. We're going to have some left over, obviously. And then, yeah, the oil filter. As always, when you're doing an oil change, you're gonna want to head, you're gonna want a oil um, pan to catch the oil, a drain pan. So this is the one I always use. It actually holds 16 quarts, so that holds more than enough. If you got one of these pans, you want to make sure that you have that little breather opened before you use it, as it says on there, because otherwise it will not be able to flow into this fast enough and it's going to overflow and pour all over your garage or driveway so make sure you got that done and then next you're going to need a 10 and a 14 millimeter socket uh the 10 millimeter is going to be to take off the little um cover right here the little plastic skid plate and the 14 is going to be for the actual oil drain plug so let's go ahead and get into this so underneath the car this is my passenger side tire right on the inside of it you're going to see this little skid plate this little cutout right here that's what we need to access to go ahead and reach that oil drain plug and that filter um, 10 millimeters the size you need to remove these you got one right here another one right there that's two three four i think you just got four so we're going to go ahead and take out all four of those and pop out this little cutout this little plastic cover and that'll give us uh, access to what we're working on today. So let me go ahead and set this phone down and start by loosening these things up. And very simple, just tent, like I said, 10 millimeter. Go ahead and plop it on there, get it started. You could probably do it with your hand once you get it started, but 10 millimeter, get it going and uh, make sure you don't lose them once you get them out because you're gonna need to put this back on once we're done. All right, so we got all four of those out. We set the cover down on the ground. 
and this is what we're working with here so this right here is your oil drain plug once again that's 14 millimeter socket to get that off and then tucked away in here is the oil filter so of course we're going to start off first by loosening up that oil drain plug having it be caught in our little drain pan right there and then once that comes to an end we are going to go ahead and screw off that oil filter but first let me switch over to that 14 millimeter socket and get this baby off so we broke it loose with that 14 millimeter and then we're gonna unscrew it here by hand. Just gotta be careful. This is a very light oil, so it's gonna be thin and kind of splash all over the place, but we're gonna try to do this as nice as possible. We got a little bit on our hand, but that's okay. So there we go. It is emptying out like it should be. But as you can see here, we actually got that washer still stuck, which we don't want. So we're gonna take that washer off and put a new one on. This one right here, we gotta scrape that off. So give me one second, wipe off my hand, and I'll kind of wait for this to finish draining, and then we'll go ahead and remove that. And obviously using gloves is recommended, but by the time I crawled underneath here and started filming, I was lazy, I didn't grab them, so. But use gloves if you can. You don't want to be getting your hand covered in oil. Do as I say, not as I do. Is that the way it goes? Anyway, as you can see, it's slowly starting to come to a uh, trickle here. And that blue gasket, like I said, you do not, that washer, gasket, whatever you want to call it, you do not want to leave that stuck there because if you go to put the oil drain plug back on, it's not going to line up the right way and you're going to have a leak. So always double check when you pull that drain plug that that washer is off. I'm simply just waiting for this oil to slow down a little bit and I'll go ahead and kind of get my fingernail under it and, and pull it off. But yeah, that is a huge important step. You don't want to miss that. All right, so there's the old gasket. As you can see, that's what it looks like now because we got that old one off. And this is the new one that they gave me with my oil filter. So you, this is your drain plug that you took out. You go ahead and you just put that new washer on there, new gasket, I don't care what you call it. Just make sure you don't double washer, double gasket it. And uh, put it all the way at the end like that. And then you're just gonna make sure you put this back in because now that all the oil is drained out, you wanna put this back in so that when you do go to put the new oil on in there, it's not pouring all the way out on your floor. So go ahead and kind of get it hand tight at first. And then you're gonna grab that 14 millimeter socket that you use to take it off and kind of just tighten it down, not too tight, but snug. That, that's about good right there. You don't want to do, like I said, you don't want to do it too tight, just tight enough so that it's snug and that it's not leaking oil when you add the new stuff, so boom. The oil's drained, it is tightened back up, and now we move over to this oil filter. So you wanna make sure you're keeping your, your pan close, because obviously this is going to leak oil as well. But that's where it's located. I don't wanna get your hand on here and try to pull it off. If you have gloves on, it'll be easier to get a grip, or you could use like a paper towel or something to get a little bit more uh, grip on it. But if not, Okay, so usually these oil filters, you could kind of break loose and just turning them by hand. Um, in this situation, I had to use, this is like an oil filter gripper that you could find on Amazon or your local parts store to kind of get it started. As you can see by these scratches I got on there from using it, but now that we got it started, it'll just loosen off just with your hand. So I'm gonna pull this off and I'm just gonna drop it in this oil drain pan, that's fine. Um, but be careful because as you see, you're going to get some oil coming. So let me go ahead and stop filming so I can try to do this as clean as possible. All right. So we got it off. As you can see, 
stripping a little bit, but yeah, the old one is off. And now we got to prep the new one and screw it back on right where we took that old one off. So this right here is the old oil filter that we just removed. This is the new one fresh out the box, but really quick, as you can see, there's this black seal that goes around the old oil filter. And it's also on the new oil filter there. You need to make sure that this old seal comes off with the old oil filter. Sometimes this seal can get stuck on the engine and then you'll do what they call a double seal, which will cause you to leak oil all over your floor. So make sure that when you take this old oil filter off, you inspect it and that black rubber ring on the top is still with this filter because you already have a new one around the new filter and you do not need two of those. It'll cause, um, you won't be able to seal it to the, it won't seal to the engine properly. So now that we got our new oil filter here, you're gonna grab your new oil, and kind of just dab it on your finger a little bit, you know, from the inside of the cap or however you gotta get it. And you're gonna run that new oil all across that new seal. And that's gonna help it stick to the engine and create a nice seal so that you're not leaking oil. So get a little bit on your finger, coat that black ring, and then we're gonna go ahead and screw it back in where it belongs. But yeah, make sure you do that. Make sure you take that fresh oil and coat that black seal as you can see there. So here's a better view when you're directly under the car. We got our new oil filter prepped. Um, and yeah, you're gonna go ahead and just bring it up in here and then twist it like this sideways so that it could screw on to that little groove that you see right there. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so by hand, we screwed it on. You see a little bit of oil still dripping there. But we screwed it on just enough so that it started making contact with the engine. And now that it made contact, you wanna screw it with your hand about another half to a three-fourths turn. So a good way to do that is to look at the writing on the oil filter here. We see this is kind of like the back. And we're gonna, we're not gonna keep screwing so we see that back, but we're gonna screw enough to where we get it on there pretty, pretty snug. You can see I'm using the paper towel for some leverage. And right about there is probably like a three fourths turn. Cause just past this Toyota writing is that same end that we started with. So that's gonna be hand snug and that's all you wanna do. So now that that's on, we are good to go. All right, so as you can see, I still have that skid plate off. We're gonna keep that off for a second just so we could check for leaks after we add the new oil. So we're back up here. We're gonna go ahead and remove this cap, kind of set it to the side. And that is where you're gonna be adding your new oil. So we are gonna add four and a half quarts of that 0W16. We're gonna grab a funnel so that we can go ahead and add it properly without spilling all over the place. And yeah, four and a half quarts. So let's go ahead and do that now. So with our funnel in place, let's go ahead and pour this in, four and a half quarts. All right, so we added about four and a half quarts. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that cap back down so nothing gets in there. And uh, we are gonna basically go ahead and pull this baby off these ramps, run it for a little bit, and then check the oil with the dipstick right here to make sure it's at the proper level. And if we need to add a little bit more based on that reading, we can go ahead and do that. And then of course, you can't forget last but not least, after you come under here and check that oil filter and that drain plug to make sure none of the new oil is leaking out, you're gonna go ahead and just tidy up that little cover, that little skid plate, the same way we took it off. So make sure you didn't lose those four screws, those bolts, and go ahead and kind of seal it back up and it'll be all dialed in and ready to go. So the next thing you wanna do, especially if you have the hybrid, is come in and turn your heat on. That'll have the engine go on so that you can make sure that you're checking that there's no leaks. You gotta have that engine running and then you're gonna pop out, check under there to make sure that by the oil filter or the oil drain plug, you have no leaks. We're also gonna reset this annoying maintenance required message because now that we changed the oil, we have no maintenance required. So 
Let's go ahead and do that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the wheel right here and you're gonna go over to the right until you get to that little settings icon right there. Once here, you're gonna scroll down using that same wheel and you're gonna go to vehicle settings and it says hold okay detail settings. So you press and hold that and you're gonna go down to scheduled maintenance now and it says push okay to reset scheduled maintenance data. So we're gonna go ahead and push okay on that. Scheduled maintenance, reset data. You're gonna hit yes. Scheduled maintenance, reset complete. Go ahead and hit that back arrow now like it tells you to, you can go back. And now we are good to go. The maintenance reminder is reset, the oil is changed and we are Gucci. All right, so we had the engine running for quite a bit no leaks as you can see we also i stuck my head under there to check visually too but i'm not crawling back underneath there until i gotta put this baby back on where it's about where which is what we're about to do now so snap that baby back in and you should be good to go but as always drive the car for at least like five minutes get it warmed up let it let it do its thing and always check that um the oil reading just make sure it's on that mark in between you know it's it's got to be full close to full and uh you'll be good i hope this video helped if any of you um it's kind of hard to do these how-to videos when i'm trying to film as well as do the work so i apologize about that but using these ramps i hope i was able to get the car up enough and get my phone underneath there good enough so that you guys were actually able to follow along and see what i was doing but yeah it's pretty self-explanatory um once you do it once or twice you kind of get in the rhythm and it'll save you some money. I know a lot of people use these cars for Uber and other rideshare services. And if you're putting a lot of miles on your car and you have to continuously go in and pay that premium to have your oil changed, it might be worth it to invest in some ramps like this and a couple tools and just do it yourself when it's due. Um, I also showed you guys how to reset that maintenance reminder light. So that's basically it. I mean, fresh oil, fresh oil filter, um, and the the light reset so you are good to go for another i usually do i try to do 5,000 miles i know toyota sometimes says that you can get like 7,500 or 10,000 um i try to stick between like you know right around 5,000 that's just what i do for all my cars but yeah hope the video helped thanks for checking it out if you enjoy car content be sure to subscribe i try to stick to all car content on this page so if you are a fan of cars how-to videos or just checking cars out Feel free, free to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And as always, we will see you guys on the next video. Peace!